Well, let's go live back to Alice Springs now because we know that there is ongoing problems. The crime rate, domestic violence, disorderly conduct in Alice Springs has not changed. And what about this? The Northern Territory Alice Springs Bakery broken into for now a 44th time. The owner of that bakery, Darren Clark, joins us once again. Is that right, Darren? 44 times nice. now? Yeah, good stats, uh, Laura. That's exactly what it is, mate. 44. What happened last night? Um, it was early Sunday morning, uh, 4.26. Uh, my partner was out with uh, the dog for some reason, looked at the camera and they were kicking the door in. It was just unbelievable, the timing. Uh, so we just jumped in the car, raced over, uh, rang triple zero on the way. Um, got there, they'd already been in and out. 58 or 59 seconds they were in, about seven of them, I think. Um, kicked the window in, took a heap of drinks, a lot of food. Yeah, so the police, police were great. They were there really quick. Um, yeah, mate, it just goes on. Yeah. I, I, yeah. 59 yeah. seconds, and, and how much damage were they able to do in that time? How much is this one going to cost you? Oh, it'll be about a thousand bucks for the new window again, um, and they've wrecked the they've wrecked the handle on the door, the other door, which is continually getting done. Um, so there's probably another three hundred. Um, then all the stock, you know, it's just bags and bags of soft drinks, food. Um, so, you know, it just goes on here, Laura. I can replace some cans of Coke and bottles of Coke and and, and um, glass windows. There's a guy here last week to hit by a rock. Um, he's lost his sight in one eye. He he can't he can't replace that. No, he 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 can't get that sight back. Then one of my staff members this morning, they they live in a permanent site on a caravan park. Um, she's in having a shower um, early this morning. An indigenous guy walks in. Um, she was in the shower. She could hear a noise. She said, "Oh, who's there?" They put on a female voice and said, oh, it's Gemma, it's Gemma. Um, and next thing he was trying to get over the, um, the shower door and whatever. So I've got a staff member now that's horrified. She's terrified to bits. She's, she's a mess. We've had a husband in this morning. He, he, he's in tears, so he's, he, he can't go to work today. He's torn between being upset and whether he's just going to cut loose. Uh, we've had the police again. So I've just seen police all the time. We had another scare last night. The camera went off. Next door premises had intruders. So I was there again last night at 8 o'clock. You know, we had so many police there. And then this morning, you look at Darwin, Laura, 19-year-old year old guy that works at a bottle shop. He's been stabbed overnight and killed. You know, when, when is this government going to wake up? When are they really, really going to wake up? and just see how far this has gone. How many more lives do we have to lose? We've lost one in Darwin overnight. We've lost one here with a stolen vehicle 18 months ago. We've blokes lost his eye. And we've had plenty of these rock injuries. This is the most, the most, the one that's got the most coverage, probably the most serious one. Mm. But we've been shouting out for years about these rock throwing incidents. They don't listen. Well, they may listen, they, they, but they don't care. They just watch. Our ministers watch, our senior, senior public servants just watch and they watch their bank accounts rise hmm. and that's all they're worried about. Keep the status quo. Nothing changes, Laura. With $250 million, we were getting here. Well, that's all smoke and mirrors too because that's coming out of recurrent funding. That's funding that goes to Indigenous people is being brought forward now. So it's not new money. It's recurrent funding. Let's take it out. And it's going now to fund existing services, services that have been proven to fail. That's why we're at where we're at. Hmm. And then to renew contracts of other services that have failed. So we're just doing the same th stupid thing over the same stupid result. And my intel is keep it calm, keep it calm, keep it calm till after the referendum. Well, for crying out loud, if you really, really want to care for Indigenous people, care for them now. Get cracking. Because this is not good enough. I was out Friday night having a couple of quiet beers, a couple of mates, 
And the amount of Indigenous people that come up and shook my hand and thanked me for what I'm doing and standing up for them was just mind-blowing. Just mind-blowing. I'm not surprised, mate. I'm actually not surprised by that. You, you might not be, but the feedback I get is that People are thanking you every day. I do want to ask you about this shocking incident in Darwin overnight. Matt Cunningham uh, brought to us a little early in the program a bottle shop attendant, a 19-year-old boy, stabbed to death. Now, you've yeah. always talked to me in the last couple of weeks about what happens when there is um, these alcohol restrictions and they're pushed to, um, you know, ba basically it's exporting the problem going out, out of Alice Springs and going to Darwin, other areas, as far as Queensland. Yeah. I don't expect you to know, but is this perhaps an example of that or, or does Darwin have drinking issues and, and violence issues of their own? If the poor buggers up there, Laura. Um, if I could start an action for Darwin now, it would go absolutely ballistic. The amount of messages I get from people up there is just crazy. They're crying out for help. They are crying out for help. And this, this is going to escalate in Darwin. So people around Australia don't think it's just Alice Springs. It's Tennant Creek, it's Catherine, and it's Darwin. And Tar Darwin's a pretty spread out area. You know, they're having a lot of problems up in Darwin. Um, and this, this is just tragic. What do you say to this poor guy's parents? What do you say? What is Natasha Files actually going to say? She won't say anything, they'll wash it away. They'll get into Parliament tomorrow and they'll bash, they'll, they'll brag about their by-election win. They'll smash up the opposition. You know, the leader of the opposition now has lost three by-elections, you know. The Finocchiaro fiasco has got to end. There's got to be change. We need some leadership to hold this government to account and it's got to start. So I'm tipping there'll be a leadership spill in the CLP probably next week. I would think so. I reckon they'll make it take a medicine in Parliament this week. Labor will take it a task. Labor will not touch this issue about this bottle shop mm. and this guy being killed. They won't touch it. This is what they do. This is what they do. They'll just move on. It's just like we've seen it for too long down here, Laura, and it will continue. And what's going on in here in the Northern Territory is an absolute disgrace. But the federal government really, really need to step in here. And if they're not going to step in, how about you, Heggy, the administrator of the Northern Territory, earn your coin, mate, do your job, step in and dissolve this parliament. Just dissolve it. Let's start again. Let's have a re-vote and let's see what happens. Because it's not working. It's really not working. So the administrator, Hugh Heggy, made a lot of calls as our chief health officer during the pandemic. You've got a big call to make now, you. Step up to the plate. Take action against this parliament because it's not working. The people of the Northern Territory have had enough People cannot go to their workplaces anymore and feel safe. Our police get spat on. Our police get attacked. Our ambulance drivers get attacked. They go into town camps here, they've got to have a police escort. Our nurses get bashed leaving work. Our doctors get bashed and sexually assaulted. What, where does this stop? Where does it stop? And they wonder why they can't attract health workers. They can't attract police. We can't attract staff. There's tradespeople here that own businesses. They cannot get staff. Because the place is unsafe. Mm. We're a major tourism town, or we were, and they've let it go, mate. They've, they've killed it. It's so sad to watch, and I've watched it for three and a half, four years now, and, and, and I've warned and warned and warned, and I've begged them. No one wants to listen. They don't want to listen. Well, it's landing in your lap, and it's landing in your lap big time, because now Darwin's out of control. See what you do now, guys. Yeah, we'll see what happens uh, today. Matt Cunningham, as I mentioned, brought us that story from that bottle shop. Just in tragic circumstances this morning. We'll speak to you again soon too, Darren. Thanks so much, as always. Thanks, Laura. Good on you, mate.